oh, general biology one students. So I wanted to share with you a study tip that I also have written about on the syllabus, but to me it's a really valuable tool both in having you prepare along the way so you don't have so much cramming to do right before the midterm, uh, but it also allows you to gauge your knowledge and to sort of self-assess what was really important, really try to pick out the important aspects of lecture every day. And so that study tip is for you to write your own practice test that you can then use as a, well, as a self-review when you get ready to prepare for the midterm exam. And so my suggestion is that you yourself come up with, after class every day, between three and five questions that could be made into multiple choice questions. And if you do that, then all of a sudden, you have a whole list of questions to test yourself, test your knowledge, and see what areas you need to study more in order to be ready for the midterm. So if you have three to five questions that could be, be, be made into multiple choice, you don't have to write fake answers, just the right answers. And additionally, you might even come up with some ideas of what pictures are important, because structure and function go together, and if you can figure out the important structures, then you also probably can guess what some of the identify the pictures are going to be on the exam. So let me go ahead and open a sample lecture here. So let's imagine that we've been studying photosynthesis. That's chapter 10 in our textbook. We've been studying photosynthesis, and we've done the first day of lecture, which is a lot of preparation, thinking about the structures involved, thinking about chemical reactions in general, and then from that, we jump into the details on the second day of lecture. But let's imagine we've only done the first day of lecture. So we might first start with the preview review questions. So use the preview review questions and also use the lecture itself to guide you in writing your own exam questions. So what is the definition of photoautotroph? What kinds of organisms are photoautotrophs? What uh, major organs of plants are specialized for photosynthesis? Which cells, which organelles? And so let's sort of go forward from there and review the slides we would have seen that day in class. So chapter 10, photosynthesis. Of course, solar energy is going to be uh, light energy. And in photosynthesis, that gets transformed into the chemical energy that's present in the bonds of molecules of sugar. We have some information about autotrophs. That's bold. That seems like that could be really important. So if autotrophs are important, maybe we could write a question about that. And so you want to have a Word document that you're working on. Here I have chapter 10 photosynthesis. And maybe I would write something like, what is an autotroph? And then I would also include the answer. And so it's up to you how you want to organize this, maybe in a table that has two columns. So you have a list of questions and a list of answers that matches up with it nicely. You might even do this in an Excel file instead of in a Word document. But let's see, what is an autotroph? An autotroph is an organism that rather than consuming other living things, it actually produces its own energy molecules. So it's sort of like it makes its own food. All right. Let's go back to review our lecture notes and the lecture itself. Oh, what other organisms are autotrophic? That was a clicker question. And that seems like that could be actually a really good exam question. So we'll head back on over to our working document. And we might write a question like, what groups of living things have at least some species that are autotrophic? And you'll have learned from lecture that, of course, plants, but also some bacteria and also protists. And so we have three major groups that all have uh, some forms that at least are autotrophic. So what's left over? Do you know this other word? We might actually have another word that you'd want to review, heterotroph. Of course, are organisms that consume other living things. And heterotrophs, well, all fungi and all animals Oops. are heterotrophs. Then we might continue along see what the lecture has followed up with. We have information on photosynthesis, converting light energy to chemical energy. It happens in the chloroplasts. And the leaves are the major locations. That might be important. So where does photosynthesis happen? Mostly in the leaves. And of course, 
which cells does it occur in? And so we might include something on which cells in the leaves, which is the mesophyll cells. And then we might even consider the structure of the chloroplast, which is the organelle where it happens. And we might even consider beyond that. So it seems like even just from our first day of lecture, we have a lot of material that we could include as sample study questions. So how about this one? What is the major organ for photosynthesis in plants? It's in the leaves. Which cells in leaves are the site of the majority of photosynthesis? And that was in the mesophyll cells. Meso means center, fill is plant. And then how about in what plant organelle does photosynthesis occur? And the name of that organelle, the structure inside the cell, you know is the chloroplast. And then, oh, chloroplast, well, that's a structure. And so chloroplast might be an excellent thing to be able to recognize a picture of. So what are the key characteristics that will help us to recognize a picture of that? Or what if we're just shown a stack of thylakoid membranes? That might also be a good question to be on an exam. And so here we are from just one day of class. We have several questions that we could ask. And it gives us a good start for our studies for just before that exam. And if you were to share with a classmate, imagine you could have instead of three to five questions for every class day, you might end up with five to 10 questions every day. Chances are both of you'll pick out some of the same key points in your study tools. And then you have a great exam review. It'll help you to figure out what you know, what you don't know, so that you can study what you don't know and do your very best work on those midterms.